What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the NetBio service for those of y'all who have no clue what the heck this thing actually is and what it does. With that being said, let's get into it. In the vast landscape of networking protocols, NetBIOS, which stands for Network Basic Input Output System, this stands out as a legacy protocol that continues to play a significant role in local area networks. It was developed in the 1980s, and NetBIOS was initially designed to facilitate communication between computers on a local network. Although it has been largely overshadowed by more modern protocols, understanding NetBIOS is still essential for anyone involved in network management management and troubleshooting. All right, so NetBIOS, this is an API or an application programming interface that allows applications on different computers to communicate within a local network. It provides services related to the session layer of the OSI model, which enables applications to communicate over the network without needing to understand the details of the network protocols. And NetBIOS itself, it is not a networking protocol, but it is rather an interface that allows different software applications to communicate. All right, so let's briefly talk about its history and evolution. So NetBIOS, it was developed by IBM in the early 1980s for their PC network. It was designed to work on small networks and initially supported up to 255 nodes. But over time, NetBIOS was adopted and extended by Microsoft, leading to its integration with various network protocols like IPX, SPX, and TCP IP. And moving on, NetBIOS provides three main types of services, and they are as follows. The first one is the name service. So this service allows for name registration and resolution. So each device on the network must register its name with the NetBIOS name service to be identified uniquely. The name resolution, this essentially translates human readable names into network addresses. Then we have the session service. So this service is responsible for establishing and managing sessions between network devices. It ensures reliable communication by handling connection establishment, data transfer, and session termination. And then we have what is called the datagram service. So this service facilitates connection list communication. Unlike the session service, it does not establish a session, but allows for the transmission of data packets or datagrams between devices. All right, so let's talk about how NetBIOS works. So NetBIOS, this operates primarily within the LAN or the local area network environment. And here is a closer look at how its components function. So we have the name service, the NetBIOS name service. This operates on UDP port 137. And when a device, which is referred to as a node, joins the network, it registers its NetBIOS name which must be unique within the network. And this registration process involves broadcasting a request to ensure no other device is using the same name. If no conflict is detected, the name is registered and the device can be identified by its name and subsequent communications. Then we have the session service. So the session service, which operates on TCP port 139, this establishes a reliable connection between two devices. This connection oriented service ensures data integrity and correct sequence making it suitable for applications requiring robust communication. And this process involves the following. So you have the session establishment. So one device sends a session request to another, and if the target device accepts, then a session is established. Then we have data transfer. So once the session is established, data can be exchanged reliably. In NetBIOS, it ensures that the data is delivered without errors and in the correct order. And then we have the session termination. So when the communication is complete, the session is terminated, which frees up resources. And the final part of the process of how NetBIOS works is the datagram service. So operating on UDP port 138, the datagram service, this allows for connection list communication. And this service is suitable for applications that do not require the overhead of session management and can tolerate potential data loss. It allows devices to send data packets without establishing a connection, which offers a faster but less reliable communication method. All right, so let's move on to talking about NetBIOS over TCP IP. So with the rise of TCP IP as the dominant networking protocol, NetBIOS was adapted to work over IP networks. And this adaptation, which is known as NetBIOS over TCP IP or NBT, this allows NetBIOS services to operate on top of the TCP IP stack 
enabling NetBIOS applications to function in larger routed networks beyond the confines of a local area network. And within that, let's talk about name resolution in NBT. So in NBT, name resolution can be achieved through the following. So the first one is by way of a broadcast. So this is similar to the original NetBIOS. A broadcast request is sent to resolve names. And this method is limited to the local network segment. And we have what is called WINS or the Windows Internet Name Service. So Microsoft introduced WINS to provide centralized name resolution. And WINS servers, they maintain a database of NetBIOS names and their corresponding IP addresses, which allows for more efficient resolution in larger networks. And then we have what is called the LM host file. And this is a static file on each device that maps NetBIOS names to IP addresses, and it is manually maintained and useful for small networks or specific configurations. All right, next, let's talk about some security concerns and best practices. So despite its historical importance, NetBIOS does have several security vulnerabilities. And some of the common issues include the following. So the first one is name spoofing. So malicious actors, they can register a NetBIOS name that mimics a legitimate service, which can potentially intercept or redirect traffic. And we have information disclosure. So NetBIOS broadcast, they can reveal sensitive information about network structures and devices. And then we have SMB exploits or server message block exploits. So since NetBIOS is often used with SMB, vulnerabilities in SMB can affect NetBIOS networks. Now, to mitigate these risks, you want to consider the following best practices. So you want to disable NetBIOS on unused interfaces. So if NetBIOS is not required, just disable it to reduce the attack surface. You want to implement firewalls to block unnecessary NetBIOS traffic, especially on public facing interfaces. You want to keep systems and network devices updated to protect against known vulnerabilities. And then you want to use network monitoring tools to detect and respond to suspicious NetBIOS activity. All right, so let's talk about NetBIOS and modern networks. So in contemporary networks, the reliance on NetBIOS has diminished due to the advent of more robust protocols like DNS or the domain name system for name resolution and more secure alternatives for data transfer. However, NetBIOS is still found in legacy systems and applications, particularly in environments where backward compatibility is essential. In Windows networks, NetBIOS is tightly integrated with SMB CIF or the Common Internet File System, which forms the backbone of file and printer sharing services. And understanding NetBIOS is crucial for managing these services, especially in mixed environment networks where legacy systems coexist with modern infrastructure. When it comes to NetBIOS and Active Directory, Active Directory it leverages DNS for name resolution, but it can still interact with NetBIOS, particularly in older versions or mixed mode environments. Administrators, they need to be aware of how NetBIOS names are resolved within Active Directory and ensure proper configuration to avoid conflicts and ensure seamless operation. All right, so let's talk about troubleshooting NetBIOS issues. So effective troubleshooting of NetBIOS related issues requires a solid understanding of its operations and interactions with other network components. And common issues include name resolution failures, session establishment problems, and datagram transmission errors. But you can use tools like MBT Stat, which can be invaluable for diagnosing and resolving these issues. So here are the common troubleshooting steps when dealing with NetBIOS. So first thing you want to do is check the name register. You want to ensure that the NetBIOS name is registered correctly and is unique on the network. Then you want to verify the WINS configuration. So if using WINS, you want to check that the server is operational and that clients are correctly configured to use it. Then you want to inspect the LM host file. So you want to ensure the file is correctly formatted and up to date with accurate name to IP mappings. And then you want to monitor network traffic. So you can use tools like Wireshark to capture and analyze NetBIOS traffic, identifying any anomalies or misconfigurations. And then finally, let's talk about the future of NetBIOS. So as networks continue to evolve, the role of NetBIOS will likely diminish further. Modern protocols and technologies, they offer superior functionality, security, and scalability. However, NetBIOS will remain relevant in specific contexts, particularly in environments where legacy support is critical. So transitioning from NetBIOS, organizations, they should plan for a gradual migration from NetBIOS dependent systems to more modern modern solutions. And this involves assessing legacy dependencies. So you want to identify applications and services that are reliant on NetBIOS and evaluate
evaluate their importance. So you want to implement DNS. So you want to transition to DNS for name resolution, which ensures proper configuration and then test to avoid disruptions. You want to upgrade your system. So update or replace legacy systems with modern counterparts that do not depend on NetBIOS. And then you want to do some training and awareness. So you want to educate network administrators and users about the transition and new protocols to ensure smooth adoption. So to wrap all of this up, NetBIOS has played a pivotal role in the development of network communication, providing essential services for name resolution, session management, and datagram transmission. While its prominence has faded in the face of modern protocols, understanding NetBIOS remains valuable for network professionals dealing with legacy systems and applications. And by grasping the intricacies of NetBIOS, its integration with TCP IP, and the associated security considerations, network administrators can effectively manage and troubleshoot net BIOS environments. Furthermore, planning for the future by transitioning to more modern protocols, this will ensure robust, secure, and scalable network infrastructures. So whether you're maintaining a legacy system or preparing for the future, the knowledge of net BIOS and its operations, this does provide a solid foundation for navigating the complexities of network communication.